Uh, I'm from Dartmouth. I'm a professor at the Dartmouth Institute and director of uh, population health measurement at Dartmouth Hitchcock Health System. And uh, this is Wayne Gretzky, who, uh, who scored more hockey goals than anyone in the history of the game. And when uh, he was asked his secret, he said it was uh, skating to where the puck is going to be. And uh, this idea of measures that matter at the front line uh, is um, a very important question. And uh, what does matter? And the very short answer, uh, a group called the Gretzky Group, uh, based in the States, about 100 people, uh, fussed with this question for a couple of years. And uh, this uh, article summarizes it. And the short answer is, uh, what should be measured at the front line is, is the value of the care to the individual person being served. And that can best be captured in general by their outcomes, their experience, and their costs. And uh, then those basic uh, domains or concepts can be brought down to very specific measures at different levels of, of specificity. Um, I'm going to start with a concept and then give uh, a few quick cases uh, that might uh, put uh, flesh on the uh, bones of the concept. And uh, the first is uh, that the aim of measures um, at the front line is to support co-production of health and health care in what uh, I might call a clinical microsystem. And that is to say whenever a person on the left has a health need, be it risk reduction or care for an immediate problem, or maintenance of a problem or recovery or palliation. And whenever that person is in direct uh, interaction with a clinician, we'll call that, or a clinical team, we'll call that a clinical microsystem. Uh, the purpose of the microsystem is to meet the needs of the person that we'll call the patient. And that's the unit where co-production of health and health care takes place. And uh, we can um, measure uh, the goodness of the co-production uh, by looking at key outcomes, such as disease status changes over time that are important to the person, such as functional changes, physical function, including symptoms, mental health, including cognition, social and role function, including uh, productivity. And the co-production is uh, assisted or not by the experience of the person receiving care, especially their engagement and their decision quality, and by their competence in self-management, uh, their competence to do their part of the job that they live with their condition 24-7, 365. And uh, so uh, this is a, a conceptual overview. And remember that the determinants of health on the lower right-hand side are multiple genetics, physical, social environment, lifestyle, behaviors, and healthcare, and healthcare adds at the margin, um, oftentimes, uh, in general, over time. So uh, a few quick cases. From the early 80s, um, this is Jack Kirk. We had started introducing uh, the measure of, of functioning using uh, visual charts, like on the left-hand side, uh, to help screen and assess the person's needs. And we developed eight uh, charts to get at um, physical, mental, uh, social, health, pain. And Jack told me a story, and it was this uh, very um, wonderful but difficult to care for 62-year-old woman who showed up in his office. He knew her quite well. He liked her very much. He felt he was doing a bang-up job with this patient. She had very difficult to control cardiometabolic disease bad blood pressure, bad, bad diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, etc. Her numbers were fantastic. And Jack looked at her charts, and, and it, there was a disconnect. Uh, her pain was high. Her overall health was viewed as very poor, self-report by her. And what he discovered was that the osteoarthritis in, his, in her hands that he had just overlooked was ruining her life. She was treated for it with routine uh, medications. Her life was better. Her care was more caring, much better results, better clinical results, 
better functional results, better health-related quality of life. And this goes to the point of using the patient's voice and measures for health assessment. Um, then in the uh, 90s, uh, this is a case of the Dartmouth Spine Center. And it was the reorganization of healthcare. So a, a spine patient shows up at Dartmouth in the old days, and they could go to the pain clinic, they could go to orthopedics, they could go to general internal medicine, mental health. The Spine Center brought all of the services together so that I, I come with a herniated disc, and it's one-stop shopping. All of the services, all the professionals are there for me. And uh, as this uh, care system, this, clin this new clinical microsystem was formed, uh, the information environment was reformed. And uh, so I show up with a herniated disc, which I did, and I'm told to do a health assessment at home or when I show up uh, on a touch pad. And when I see um, my, my clinician, let's say it's Dr. Weinstein, upper right, who founded the Spine Center, we're on the same page because of the health assessment has shown how I am doing and therefore what my treatment choices might be and therefore uh, what, um, what my current health status is and how that changes over time so that as I'm cared for in the spine center, we can look at changes in disease status, functional and risk status, the perception of the goodness of the care for me, and uh, keeping track of, of costs over time. And uh, so this is a very busy uh, slide, obviously, but when uh, Jim Weinstein says, I can't be a good doctor absent this information, every element of information is patient voice generated on this view. So there's physical function, mental health, point in time, over time. There's disease status. There's risk status. There's the perception of how much my treatments have helped me. This is fed forward every time the person shows up. So that um, I'm coming back with my herniated disc at three months or six months or 12 months, and it becomes a moving picture of how our co-produced care has helped me as an individual. And then, because this is done in a cooperative or collaborative network, um, it's possible to aggregate all the people with herniated discs up and create a picture of people who received surgery and didn't uh, based on, um, on, uh, on that center's care. And um, in general, uh, a lot of details here, we won't go into it, but in general this shows that the average person two years after having herniated disc surgery does better on disease status, functional status, perceived health benefits, and it costs more. 27,000 versus 13,000 direct and indirect costs. But what then happens is on the right hand side for shared decision making there's a personalized calculator. So the next herniated disc patient shows up and based on entry of individual characteristics you can get a, an estimate lower right hand of the potential benefit at one year, two years in important outcomes that matter to patients. Um, so that's a, a second uh, fairly sophisticated case. Um, and it goes to the point of uh, the use of, of, of this information, especially patient-generated, for shared decision-making, outcomes tracking, and starting to build the science of comparative effectiveness. The third is uh, a case from Sweden. And here the uh, Swedish Rheumatology Quality Registry uh, has um, uh, started to serve uh, over 90% of the patients in Sweden. And it, in some ways it's similar uh, to uh, what I just showed uh, in that the health assessment comes in based on patient reported information as well as on clinically collected information. So there's a, there's a dashboard and um, uh, this is in Swedish. Uh, your Swedish is probably better than mine. But uh, the functional outcomes that the patient reports are here, the clinical outcomes, uh, clinical assessment, as well as lab values are here. And this particular individual uh, had a flare in their uh, RA. And they were doing very, very poorly in January, February, and March. The treatment changed to biologics, and it shows that in June forward, 
the person was in remission, they were doing much better clinically, they were doing much better in their health-related quality of life, and uh, this um, is, uh, has been used to change the care model, to uh, do quality improvement at the practice level. It covers over 90% of the uh, patients uh, with rheumatology problems uh, in Sweden. And interestingly, there's an association between this registry and patients being sicker coming in for their first visit and getting better results more quickly uh, over this period of time from about 1990 to about 2004, this has continued. So that uh, the use of measurement wisely at the front line is now uh, being connected to a national policy uh, that can enable more people to gain more benefit. So we'll finish then with uh, Amy, uh, last case. And uh, it's all about Amy. Amy, uh, I met uh, when she was 35 years old. She had just moved to the Upper uh, Valley region. She uh, was doing self-breast examination in late October. She was an elementary school teacher. On Halloween day, uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer at the Dartmouth uh, uh, Breast Cancer Center. Breast, uh, Center. Uh, we followed her closely uh, from her point of view, her journey for 12 months. And every time Amy was interacting with our cancer program, uh, we were there observing and talking with Amy. Uh, Amy's journey was, uh, was pretty incredible. Uh, she had a fairly rare form of breast cancer. She had decisions to make about her treatments, chemotherapy, uh, uh, and, um, and radiation, et cetera. Very important decisions to make, uh, decisions about her health care plan, and then her outcomes, survival, and then um, return uh, to work and teaching and function, uh, free from worry. Amy is now uh, almost 10 years out. She's doing extremely well. But the point here is that what measures matter to the person who's the patient at the front line is very dynamic. Uh, and by getting uh, the right patient-generated and clinical measures together, at the point of care, it's possible to create a guidance system, a guidance system to understand the current health status, um, what decisions need to be made, the quality of those decisions, and uh, the impact of those uh, treatment plans and my self-management uh, uh, self plan on my outcomes.